It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limb Walker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, and Twisted Mind Bow Strings. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Upmark Journal, everybody. Mike Adams sitting in the cabin today with Dan DeFall. Yeah, it's February. What's going on? You know what? It's February. It's a little cold out, but it's not too bad. <laughs> it's better than it has been. It has been. There's no polar vo- vortex on the horizon, mm-hmm. so uh, not doing too bad. Um, but if there was, you'd get your Hunter's Blend coffee to keep you warm. So, and there you go. Remember, get over to Hunter's Blend coffee.com use the promo code unj and get 10 percent off your order all right hey my wife's watching she's taking care of the little one so make sure you uh show the picture there to my granddaughter sweet matthew what's going on with a buddy of mine from work but uh you know as billy just posted here the michigan guys are making waves in vegas this weekend uh, and one ohio guy and one Ohio guy, that's right. You know, uh, for those of you who might not know, uh, the Vegas shoot is this weekend. Yeah, the Vegas shoot, uh, it started Friday. Yep. They had first round Friday, second round Saturday, thirds and finals today. Yep, absolutely. Uh, you know, and uh, one of our friends from Ohio, Dan Yas, was shooting. He shot a 899, uh, missed the final shoot down, but they take everybody from that shot an 899 and put him in what's called a lucky dog. Yep. Got into the second round, and when they get into there, they have to shoot an inside-out X to keep going until they eliminate everybody, until one person wins the lucky dog, and they get to go to the final shootdown. You know, and that's funny, because I was, I was, I was looking for video on it. You found it, obviously, yep. but yeah. I tell you what, just seeing the, the amount of participants there and kind of the shooting lines. Did you, I don't know if you saw the picture of Pete Shepley on the line. No, I did not. Yes, uh, Jason Fister. Yes. Posted one. I oh, think. okay. I think it was him that posted it. Um, Pete Shepley on the shooting lines in Vegas. Still shooting. Still shooting. Um, but you want to talk about, you know, when we go to our league, we're, we're, we're kind of close. Yeah. Yeah, no, there it was just crazy. <laughs> Toe-to-toe, shoulder-to-shoulder. Yeah. It was amazing. But, you know, but those guys, Michigan guys are doing pretty good. Yeah, I want to give a shout-out Uh a guy that I used to shoot at an archery range with, Rocky Cummings, his son, I don't know how old he is, but he was shooting in the, in the youth division. He shot at 899, Okay, I think, or was it a 599? They shoot 600? They shoot I, eight, I don't know. I don't know if they're shooting two days or three days, but anyway, he uh, he took second place. That's nice. You know, I, I can't remember if it was a 599 or an 899. I can't remember how many rounds they shot. Okay. But yeah, he won some cash. Nice, nice. Rocky's got to be proud of him. Absolutely. Rocky shot well. I can't remember exactly what he finished with. Chris Schner, I think, shot a five. I want to say ninety-eight, five something like that. When I when I saw it, but uh, it didn't make it into that next. That was the last score I saw. I don't know what his final score. Yeah, was. I don't. Was two I don't days know. He was a five ninety-eight. Right, and so I think they had one more round to go. And that was another thing. I was trying to locate people, and when there's so many, yeah, you're just scrolling, and it's just like, yeah, it's crazy. But you're right; they are shooting pretty good. And you know it's kind of cool uh, knowing these guys. Oh, Billy said uh, Rocky Junior is sixteen. Thanks, man. Uh, hey, Dean Elliott, thanks for tuning in. Fred Trusky, thanks for tuning in. Man, we got a lot of people in the house tonight. That's cool. Yeah. So Eric, he, a friend of mine from high school, Ken Sakuna is joining. Who just turned fifty, by the way? He's welcome, fifty. Welcome to the fifty club. Welcome to the fifty club. So, nice. But it, it's just been a busy weekend. Great weekend. Uh, you know, I, where do you want to start? Well, why don't we start right from the top? And uh, let's go what we did yesterday, because I, I think it, it I've been there now. I think this is my second year that I've gone. Uh-huh. And every year I learn something new or I try to ask a question where I'm going to learn something new. Right. And, and I listen because uh, Dr. Dr. Deer himself was there with Wayne Sitton, Luke Sitton, Dr. James Kroll. Yeah. And uh, it, it, it's one of those things that um, he talks you listen, right, and you see, right, because he'll show show you things that 
typically, yeah, you're not really looking for, mm-hmm. depending on what uh, gland you're looking at or what uh, 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 liver fluke. Yeah, what I, parasite I, you're looking at. Right, thank you. I had to, I had to think about that for a second. Um, but just amazing information coming out of that, that club where they've been doing this now uh, for so many years and, and hearing uh, how they're doing. Right. And what they're doing and trying to feed off of that and say, OK, well, you guys are doing this, this and this. And um, they had us. I know at one point um, the does they were bringing in, uh, the does were producing more bucks than does that they if they if they would have went to birth, which mm-hmm. he kind of chuckled about. He goes, the deer will manage themselves. Yes. Yeah, give give them the opportunity. I mean, if we don't manage them, Mother Nature will manage them for right. us. Right. And he says if you know, and he says so they're managing and it is kind of saying, okay, they needed more bucks and and here we go, right? Right. So, hey, and you know what? Um I got a little video here and I'm going to have to size it here on the fly. So So you do that and I uh, you know, we'll talk about it as we go along. Yeah, and um and actually, logistics it, of this place is is really cool. It's they, not playing, so it, it's, I, I tried. <laughs> it's, the logistics is really cool when you got a, a bunch of twenty to thirty people gathered around uh, several biologists and him cutting up and weighing things and measuring things and looking at things and absolutely and and, and, it, and it starts from when they bring the deer into the one door, they pull the jawbone, they age it. They open her, open her up mm-hmm. carefully. Mm-hmm. They do some samples. They check the uh, bone marrow. Yep, they'll cut the front leg off, and uh, they, they're checking. Uh, that'll be the first indicator uh, of uh, stress or health on the deer. So Yeah, um, and um, all the deer up to the point where we left was healthy. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, the only thing that, that even remotely appeared or popped its head up was uh, tapeworms. You know, which is an indicator of coyotes. Right. And um, and he did say, he says, you got to remember now, we're doing this in February, where the does are fat and happy, getting pregnant, being fat, and the does are skinny and trying to make it. Right. right. And come August, it'll, it'll, it'll flip. Be, it'll flip. Right. The, 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 <laughs> I liked his terminology, the bucks sitting around talking about what they did last ride. <laughs> That was good. Right. Um, you know, looking looking back at everything, I talk, talked about at the beginning of the live stream here about uh, discussions with people. We we had a, actually had several comments yesterday. You know, what still deer season? Question mark. And well, what's going on? Why are you shooting deer in February? What's you know? There's confusion as to why they're holding a, a, a necropsy at this time of the year. And basically, what they're looking for, like you said, we're, we're looking at the health of the deer. At this time of the year, this time, you know, early February, deer is uh, that you bring in, that you shoot and bring in and start looking at certain things scientifically. He, it gives an indicator as to how well that herd is doing. And he said it, it, it's the first step in a year long process. Right. And he went through the steps of uh, this is the first step. Mm-hmm. And they were going to send some uh, samples off to be tested. And, and but this is only the first time. And then he went through uh, there's. February. Mm-hmm. Then there's going to be in the summer. Yep. Uh, when they do a, it's a physical site of looking for fawns. Right. And then we go into. I think he went into. It, it took a year to figure out his the total deer recruitment in one year. Right. And he said forty percent mm-hmm. is the number you need to have a su- sustainable herd. Right. Is that right? Yeah, close to that number. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you know, we're looking at. When the rut was, that's another thing. When they when they check the fetuses, I mean, we've talked a lot about this. I don't want to bore too many guys unless you start chiming in here and you really want to know more about it. We'll go into detail. But when they look at the they they take the fetuses, they put them on a fetal scale. They can tell exactly how old that fetus is when that that doe got bred. The actual how many days back, and that'll tell you how tight that rut is. And we've talked about this so and many times before. We have, and it was kind of cool because it's they, important. It's it's very important because they measured a couple out. And it came in, it, the first couple were November, like, 12th, but then they had one November 3rd, I want to say it was. Did you see the size of those fetuses yes. when, when they actually, when they put them on the table? I'm like, man, those things are large compared to the other ones they brought in. And they they, date, they, they measured them and dated them. Yeah, they were And so prior. then the, the conversation started as to, and, he, and the first question he said was, when was the full moon? Right. Late October. Late October. And he goes, three to five days after the full moon, you've got 
activity. Yep. And that's probably start when she breeding cycle. And they that is what happened. So I was, I was like, so we're looking on our phones for next October's full moon. <laughs> right. Yeah. So we want to hunt three to five days after that. Right. Exactly. So and then okay. But the, the thing is though, that's that's there where conditions are prime and optimum. You know, they manage that property. When I say property, we're talking thousands. Like I think it's twenty six thousand acres. acres, roughly. And and and. and like you said, the health of the herd, right? Mm-hmm. And, he, and, he, and he held up kidneys. He says, these are healthy kidneys. I've never seen so much kidney fat, so I, much fat well, in, the, in the females. That's it, right? Yeah, so, they, were, they were fat and happy. They were fat and happy. And and after all this is said and done, they go and they take the meat, and I think they donate it. Well, I, somebody actually oh, had asked, and so I went up and I asked one of the guys, I said, what do they do with the meat? And he said, first thing is the, the guys who are the shooters – Get first choice if okay. They, if they want it, they they get to take a deer, and after that they take it for camp meat because um, it's a big camp, and then after that, what's left over they donate. Okay, so uh, speaking of a big camp, uh, one of the things this year was a little bit of, of trouble because we had an ice storm here, right? And so they were ha- they could plow the main roads, but they couldn't plow all the roads, right? So they were having to sled the the does back in some is- instances. And some of these deer were coming back skinned. Skinned. <laughs> and it's it it like, the wow. fur got The fur got rubbed off. Because it was being dragged for four miles yeah. on the back of a sled. Yeah. The, the ice and the snow actually pulled the hair off. And uh, it looked like they'd been rubbing up on a fence post. Right, exactly. Rubbed themselves raw, you know. But, so. uh, no, it was, uh, it's always good to, 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 and to be able to ask questions. Yeah. He'll be doing whatever he's doing, and they're doing their measurements. And if you have any questions... Just ask. Yep. You know, and, and they talked about uh, one of the things that I, I really, when I first picked up, they were talking about was what are they feeding them? What are they planting? Mm-hmm. How much are they planting, right? Right. And he said for as much land as they have, they have about 500 acres of planted food. Okay. And what he said is, so I listened as to what they were planting, and they plant corn and beans, but they put an electric fence around them. Right. And then they go to, for their spring, for their summer grow, it's oats and um clover mm-hmm. and so that's that's their, they, they plant that and then when it gets to fall they'll plant uh winter hardy oats okay and i found so when you hear somebody talking about oats mm-hmm. it's like well is an oat an oat an oat right so i had to ask I said, when you talk oats are you is there like uh, umpteenth variety of oats sure and he said well there is and there isn't he goes mm-hmm. Really, any oats will do during the summer, mm-hmm. but it's the winter one that there's only two companies, I think he said, uh, that provide a oat that's hardy enough for winter. Okay, that'll, that'll sustain growth and, and grow into the late season. Right, exactly. So if you're planning and want to hunt with oats around, you got to use buck forage. Right. And I'm like, oh. So come come the, the winter, that's when they take their fence down around the corn and the beans and let the deer have that. Okay. So that was kind of cool. That I, I I stepped in and I had to ask Wayne, and I pulled him aside and I, I asked those questions just so I could get it in my mind. And because everybody's got something, right? Absolutely. You yep. just don't want to go plant the wrong thing and have a, a frost, and all of a sudden it's dead. Yeah, and and there was a lot of talk around that later on about the difference. But I, I got to point out, Adam Kimmer said you weigh them first. You, you forgot that they actually weigh them. <laughs> so he just wanted to correct you. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> So Adam was doing a fine job yesterday, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Hair Puller. Yeah, he, he was literally pulling hair. I wanted to pull my hair by the end of the day trying to get back home. Yeah, which I have to admit, it wasn't too bad driving up and driving home. Friday night was pretty bad driving had, up. Yeah, we we had a lot of snow, a lot of ice, and a lot of snow squalls. Yeah, I was skating uh, all the way to camp. You know, I stayed at my camp, and then that morning I met you, and then we went on over to uh, to the camp to the other camp where they were holding the the health check. So. But yeah, you know, once again, it was, it was very educational. The main reason I wanted to go was to take my daughter up. Uh, she went up, and her boyfriend went with us. And Mister Mister uh, Need Fresh Air. Yes, yes. So uh-huh. we we took took them up, and I wanted to put my daughter in front of you know our, our DNR uh, biologist and uh, whitetail specialist and uh, DNR uh, technician because all three of them are females and work in the industry. They work on the biology side, you know, on the animal side of things, the science behind it. And I wanted her, because that's kind of the field she's looking at, either veterinary or some kind of wildlife right. biology. And I thought, what better way to see it in action than to go to the necropsy, see what they're doing, 
ask questions and then talk to these ladies and figure out schooling wise what they went through, whether, you know, the choices they made and, you know, how they progressed through their career. Right. Exactly. So she got some good information, you know, and hopefully she uses it to her advantage to figure out what she wants to do. The world's an open book. That's right. So we'll see. But uh, I tell you what, we're bumping up here on our first break. We come back. I want. I do have some video here that I've already preloaded. I want to show as we talk. That about will it. work. It does work. So we're gonna step outside. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at PSEArchery.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. You know, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this video up. I got the the volume turned down on it, but uh, so that way we can talk over top of it. But this, at this point of the day, when we were at uh, the necropsy, this like, was just before lunch. Yeah, Danny actually alluded to this as we went to the break of the fact that uh, Dr. Kroll said, "Hey, uh, next year we're gonna bring in, we're gonna show you guys something really neat. We're gonna talk about shot placement. We're uh, gonna cut the deer in half." Yeah, so. <laughs> You know, they, they really didn't do anything to this deer. They brought it right over after they weighed it. And I don't know if they took the jawbone out or not, but basically they're taking the hood off of this thing. They're going to lift the hood up. They're going to... Taking the rib cage out. Yeah. And you don't get this every day. And Yeah. So it was kind of cool. You're just kind of sitting there going, what are they doing? Yeah. And uh, it'll take a second for them to kind of get into the side of it here. But as they uh, they get the, the this side rib cage off, what they're going to do is show... The actual organ placement, organ placement on a deer, and when you shoot to a certain spot, what you're going to wind up hitting, whether you're shooting a bow or a gun. Yeah, and the difference, you know, where you should shoot is a is a bow or gun. So, uh, to me, this when I when we look at a deer and we look at the insides, we're staring down. The legs are up in the air. Somebody's probably helping us hold the legs apart. We're just unzipping it, and we're looking at the deer from the belly. Down. You're not looking at it side on a table. Side on a table like you'd be when you're shooting it. So to me, this was this was some really good info. I mean, we've seen pictures. Well, you've, you've seen, seen pictures. You, you've seen the videos of where to shoot. And, but what, but he, what lies behind what organ? And he explained when you hit wherever he points, mm -hmm. what that arrow is doing or what that bullet is doing and what you're hitting, what you're touching, yep. where you don't want to hit. Um, yeah, and he actually at that point right there, he's pointing to the ribs. He says, "He says, quick commercial here for you guys. Do not throw these away. Right, exactly. <laughs> Take a meat saw, cut them in half, and he said, put a rub on them and barbecue them or uh, or smoke them. So right. he and said, some of the best meat there is. Exactly. So um, he said, if you're shooting a gun, I'm going to show you the best place to shoot a deer. And then he kind of explained his method of shooting uh, and reloading, but never really taking his eyes off the deer. He do just, you do that? I was trying to think of that, and my last, uh, the last year that I shot with my gun, I did do that. But I have a semi-auto, okay, so I don't have to rack. So right. I just pulled the trigger and stayed on him. Okay, wondering why the deer didn't fall. That yeah, Lincoln says uh, Lincoln Rome from "Let Him Go, Let Him Grow." That was great to see firsthand. Absolutely, Lincoln. You know it, uh, and here he is. He's he's kind of making sure everything's in the right spot as as, as things got jostled around to show us. But uh, yeah, when when I'm shooting, I shoot bolt action most of the time yep. now. And I, when I come up off the gun after the shot, I mean, I'll come up off to look, just to look over top of the scope yep, to see if the deer went down or if it's, if it's taken off running, whatever it's going to do. But as I come up, first thing I do is I rack another round in. I never lift the gun up off of whatever I'm shooting off of. Exactly. You know? Yeah, I've automatically got another round in, in the rifle. So, And that's one thing he said that you need to really make sure that you do. And he uh, he really stressed that point exactly. So so he's going through he's going through the shot placement uh, with a rifle, and I do believe the first one is going to be up in the top of the shoulder, at top the base of the, of the shoulder. Neck. Yep, and you know above the heart, up near the spinal column. He said, "When well, what that does is it severs that sp the the spine, but also uh, the aorta goes up and de and then descends to the back." And he said, "If you shoot like where he's pointing with that knife, he's drawing a little circle like right there on the scapula." It's going to drop the deer right in its tracks, and it's going to sever the aorta. It's going to sever the spine and sever the aorta at yep. the same time. Yep. So you're literally paralyzing the deer, and before, the, like you said, before the deer hits the ground, it's dead. We'll have bled out. <laughs> yeah, bled out, and it's dead. It's done. 
Which so. you know, it, it, I've done that before, and it they don't go nowhere. Right. So and he goes through this whole. He'll start at the top, and he goes. He'll the next spot he's going to go is when you're a bow hunter. Right. And he said, "Don't shoot shoot it here if you're shooting with a bow." Right. Absolutely. Right? He goes, "You yeah. don't want to shoot here." Right. You know, kind of that. You know, and that's the thing is that that spot is so small. You know, and it's what the bow hunters call no man's land. You know, when you shoot them up high, and you don't get them because there's a there's a, a small window where he's talking about shooting that deer, and it literally could go through the deer. Yep. And not kill it. And not kill it. So if you shoot low on that spot. Right. And there's a spot. And, and Erica, my daughter, hit a no man's land spot just under the spine, mm-hmm. but above everything that was vital on the doe. And basically it went through her. Right. And that was it. Well, and there was a picture floating around the internet here a couple of weeks ago that there was a hole through a deer like that. Oh, yeah. I saw that. And um, and I don't know if that was photoshopped or if that was true, but it was up but, high like that. But technically it could be true. Yep. They do have no man lands on, on animals that... They can take a hit, it go through them, and they'll still live. And right there, he just cut the the pericardial sac out from around the heart, so you can see the heart a little better. And he's showing where the aorta comes up off of the heart, and where where there's a shot placement uh, spot there that you need to hit, or as a bow hunter, where you need to hit as well. And it'll right it'll behind dispatch the, him. right behind the shoulder, right behind the leg is where you want to hit. And if you, he said if you hit this, you'll be taking off the heart, top of the heart. Yeah. You know, and the cool thing about this is, is at this point when he's showing, you could hear a pin drop. You could. That was, it, I, I kind of stood back and just kind of peered over everybody's shoulder. But yeah, you could definitely hear a pin drop. It was pretty cool. Yeah, it was just, it, it's awesome. And he, he, he starts at the front of the deer and he even goes back to the no man's land back there. Yep. Of uh, don't shoot him here. Yeah, don't shoot him, you know, in the guts. Don't, you know, the, the descending artery when it goes back, the femoral artery. Yep. You know, he talked about that and then talked about the Texas heart shot and all that stuff, what the people that people do. That, uh, yeah. To be able to sit in, in, now this video is actually, we have this online on our Facebook page. For those of you who listen to the podcast, obviously you can't see what we're talking about right now, but you can go to our Facebook page, scroll down, and it's, it's a video called Shot Placement. And uh, I think it's 15, 20 minutes long-ish. Yeah. So, you know, feel free to check that it's out. It's actually very educational. It, Absolutely. It's, it's, it's educational that you want to, according to, to Dr. Deer here, when you shoot what your bullet or your broadhead is doing at the time and what it's hitting, yep. which, which is kind of really cool. Yep. You know? And what organ, you know, what organs behind this organ? What organs behind that organ? You know, I mean, obviously we know where the lungs sit. We know where the heart sits. But when you get back in and you gut shoot a deer, uh, depending on what organs you hit, whether you're going to kill them or not, or whether you're going to have just a wounded deer that's that's going to be suffering. So, I mean, it, it just really gives you and a he did good mention, visual look. And he did mention that, and uh, there was one of the shots that I, he goes, this is what tracking dogs are for. <laughs> right. He goes, you're going to need one because you're going to find blood, then nothing, blood, then nothing. Yeah. And uh, it just he just walks you right through it, and everybody was just gathered around, just taking it all in. And that's... That's the cool thing about this is is you're up close, you're personal, uh, or he's personal with you as far as answering questions. I mean, you can see you can see these people on the other side of the table. We got one young fella right there in the blue coat. That's uh, I mean, he's right front and center. Okay, did you see him helping out with the? Uh, they put a little the, the little blue outfit on him. Uh-uh. You didn't see that. Uh-uh. Uh, he got there, and all of a sudden I look over and they got him on with the little blue the uh, apron apron thing, and he was over by. Um, he was helping the gentleman cut the front leg off and do whatever they Bone were doing. Marrow? Yeah, they okay. were. And he had his, he had those really big latex gloves on. Okay, and he was helping <laughs> out, and it was good to see. And he, yeah. he he just was getting his face right into it. You know, and one other thing I want to mention that I saw right before I left that it, it gave me hope for our future is the fact there was a lot of young people there. You know, and I'm saying like from 21 down to this young man's age, well, uh, young adults uh, or teenagers, young people there. And to me, you know, we always say we're losing hunters. We're, you know, it's an old man's game now. But seeing youngsters there to me and learning about deer hunting, learning about habitat, learning the science behind it and what you see on the inside of the deer and listening to Dr. Kroll um, and getting that knowledge to me gives me hope for the future. And um, even with the older gentleman, the gentleman we were talking to, um, uh, the one that had a relative at Specs Howard. Okay, I don't remember his name, but I know who you're talking about. But he liked to come up and just see it mm-hmm. for his own personal, uh, just coming up, looking at it, and seeing what's going on, and, and just being there. So you know, and that's that's cool as well because of the fact that, and I don't want to put anybody into categories, but the older generation of deer hunters, a lot of times, 
have problem with modern science. They, you know, talking about shooting does. Don't we're not, we're not going to shoot like you said at your camp. You used to buy doe tags and nail them to the wall or burn them. Yep. You know, and it, it's changing minds. Seeing the science behind this, something we didn't have 15, 20 years ago that was available to the public. That now things like this that we're invited to that we can share and get this information. Well, out. here here's the difference now. I think that's really really. And we had this discussion uh, with along with about 50 million other discussions we had during the day. But it was like um, the type of meat you're getting from a deer. Mm-hmm. No fat, mm-hmm. lots of protein. Yep. A very healthy meal. Organic. Very organic. What better way to give to your family than a healthy meal? And I don't remember who it was that we were talking to, but I think it was Luke, uh, the assistant manager of the camp there. I think it was him that said, you know, we're starting to see a slow turnover in the millennial age uh, of our hunting population, we're starting to see them buy into this organic, uh, this organic lifestyle, and this is one way and, they can get the food. And these articles are coming out in the New York Times. Mm-hmm. They're coming out in uh, the other major publications. Out, I think it was the East Coast that he kept referring to. Mm-hmm. But it, it was showing them that you hear all the horror stories about the, the beef and the cattle and what do they go through. Right. But what better way to give a nice, healthy meal than going out and getting one Providing yourself a deer for the family. Absolutely, putting food on the table and doing it in a, in a sustainable way that's uh, that's organic. It uh, you know, and if you you want to go down the the road of the carbon footprint, you know, uh, we'll even touch on that a little bit. The fact that you know you can do this in your own home area. You don't have to travel a long way away, or that beef doesn't have to come from you know uh, a couple hundred miles away and be trucked in. You know, uh, if you want to go down that road, right? So. And even if you do, it it it, it lends itself to. Um, uh, it lends itself to spending time with friends and family mm-hmm. and somebody getting a deer and making an event out of it and, and making it enjoyable to go do it. Not, right. a, not a burden, you know, oh, it, it was this and it was that. No, I right. was with most of the time, rifle season, I'm with my cousins. Right. And, you know, it, it's probably one of the best weeks you have all week is when all year is when you get together and it, it might be the only time we do get together. Right, right. So, no, it was uh, it was a really good time and uh, very educational. This was, I think, I think this was the sixth one that I've been to, and I always Ma- seem to learn something new every time I go. Matter of fact, it was your sixth one because you had in your memories pop up. Yeah, at that six years ago was you and Mikey. We're we're doing the same thing. We're doing it. We're showing it live. Same pl- same club, different place because they got a new building. Yep. And I think I remember that in the videos that you provided for that one. But mm-hmm. uh, no, it, it's it's so educational. So and he's open to questions, and mm-hmm. no question is a stupid question. Right. Every year, it, it just you, it, it's nice to be able to be asked a question and, and be heard. And I think we went live with that for almost an hour. So if you if you go like we said, the shot placement that was the video we were just showing. If you go down below that one, there's one that says, you know, uh, Michigan Deer Health Check. Or what yeah. It, I can't remember what I labeled it. But go down to that one, and that's like almost an hour's worth of, of uh, streaming footage that we right. recorded and posted. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'll get those put up onto our website, and I'll put them on the website front okay. page. So you can, later in the week, if you want to take some time, you'll be able to go click it. I just got to go and do my usual weekly download and get All it right. back up there. But I'll do that for those as well. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. We're bumping over here on our second break. Uh, let's step outside, take our next break. We come back. Um, you want to talk about something you got and do a little well, show and tell? It, it, we're going we're gonna to look at it live right here because I, I have no idea what I'm getting into. <laughs> okay. So with that, we'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back, third segment of the show. So, we made it back home from the necropsy. We did, and um, as you know, we've, we've we've joined a couple of groups: uh, Scent Lock, yep, uh, Alliance, yep, and Easy Cut. Mm-hmm. Right, and so uh, we met Josh on our way back from ATA. Um, 
picked up the Rambo bikes. Yep. And actually, uh, I got I got somebody that's asking me about that. So next time I go up north, Josh, if you're still on, the Rambo is headed north, and uh, we're going to take it for a test drive. All right. Cool. So good. Good to hear. But while we were standing there in the snow, it blowing, was it was cold. Cold. He, he he said, "Hey, I got this pack that he had." And then he kind of told the story about it. Mm-hmm. So, oh, that's not that one. Nope, this is my sling pack. Easy cut sling pack. So, I'm just going to put this up here for the camera. For those on the podcast won't be able to see it. But I have not done anything to this. It looks a little dirty. It, it looks a little dirty, and it's like, oh, okay, Josh, would you like to kind of tell us what's going on with it? <laughs> he goes, well, he had it on the back of his four-wheeler two seasons ago. Mm-hmm. And it disappeared. Right. What do you mean it disappeared? Well, they kind of forgot it was on the back of the four-wheeler when driving off into wherever they were. And it fell off. And lo and behold, it fell off. For two seasons, they're walking in the woods, and they find it. So that was laying out in the woods for two years. So this was laying out in the woods for two years. And you can see right up here on the handle that uh, something was, I'm not sure. But um, Career sharpened his teeth on that. Looks like it. On the rubber handle. So I'm like, okay. So he gave it to me and said, here. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll take it. And... Let's let's see what we got, because so obviously they've been. Uh, there's the pruners. There's the pruners. Now this has been two two seasons, so probably two years, right? Mm-hmm. So here's the pruners. Now there's a new set, and this is a two seasons laying in the woods set. So uh, still basic, functional. Still functional. Yep. Little little turf falling out. I'm not gonna vacuum, by the way. Uh, so um, I'm gonna get these out. A little rusty. I'm going to try to clean this stuff up and uh, see what I can do about it. But the things are still still in great shape. I mean, worst case scenario, you put a new blade on it, and you're ready to well, rock. Okay, so that's the thing. With Easy Cut, you can get a new blade to put on this. Yep. So uh, if if well, well, actually, I'm gonna I haven't tested this blade. It actually still looks pretty sharp. To tell you the truth, a little rusty. Well, put your finger in and see if you can take it off. <laughs> you're a funny guy. <laughs> so we're gonna try that um, and see how they work. Okay. Um, I know you really enjoy yours. You were using yours down in Indiana. Indiana. Yep. yep. I took this down with me and did some scouting uh, on the, the, the lease that uh, we're going to be using this year. And that, that was the one thing. Is like, I mean, I took the whole thing with me because if you're out on the property and you're doing some scouting and you want to put trail cameras up, what have you, take one of these with you. If you've got one, take it with you. And if you don't have one, get one because these pruners here, I mean, we've showed mine before. Okay. Those things look like they're still in great shape. You, you know, I haven't... That was the first time I've taken... I don't even know what's in this bottom of this pack. Maybe a squirrel. Uh, dude, I, you, you have no idea what I was just thinking. Because I was like... This is literally the first time. I'm like, oh, there better not be a dead mouse in there. Right. So, this is the lobbers, which actually, this it doesn't even look like nothing even surprisingly didn't eat this. Right. So, you know, and comparing them to, to mine, they, they look unscathed, you I know. Mean, there we go. You know, a little bit of you know, a little bit of rust expected from the moisture out in the out in the woods. But this is for two. This is from laying out from two years. Yeah, it's even got the cobwebs to prove it. You know, so you know what? And don't forget these these are telescoping as well. So so right off the bat, here here's my thought. Um, these were laying out in the middle of nowhere for for two seasons, mm-hmm. uh, and the only rust that I see is actually just around the rivets, which are just screws mm-hmm. and and i don't see any ru- major rust on the blades uh, i definitely don't see major rust i see a little bit of spot rust uh i might be able to clean that up but uh do you got the uh you know does that one have the saw with it let's see i don't know I'm oh, just... and again this is this has been laying out in the weather for two years okay there's nothing in the bottom okay that's good yeah. <laughs> okay so there, there there is no saw so i'll okay. have to get a saw but there you go, folks. I have not cleaned this up yet, and I and I wanted to do this purposely to to actually look at how this would, mm-hmm. how easy cut, what it looks like after staying out in the wilderness for two for two seasons. And truthfully, rain, snow, mud, yeah, and uh, yeah. So I think the only thing is the discoloration, and that's probably from the laying out in the sun. Right. Right. Actually, you can tell which way is up. Yep. It was laying this way. So. So stay tuned. Um, I will. Uh, Come back and... You know, we should have had a pair of those yesterday with us. Okay, so... Right? Because when they were uh, they were taking jaw bones off and taking the leg off and checking the bone marrow this and opening up the rib cage, this is what they were using loppers. And I, I think a, a good pair of easy cuts with you. If you guys are into deer management and you're really trying to... Uh, 
you know, take records and, and look at the health of the deer and you, you take that leg off to look for that bone marrow. Or if you're taking jaw bones out, you know, that's just another thing that you guys can use them loppers for. So Right. And, and I think I and you just got one recently and I only see something different in the bag is the the little pouch on top. Right, right. Uh couple questions here. Um Steve asked, how do you get an invite? And I assume he's talking about to the uh to the uh, necropsy. Uh, actually, I've known uh, Wayne, Wayne and Luke Sitton that are manager and assistant manager over there at Turtle Lake Camp for probably six, six, seven years now. And, and it's through them that I got the invite and Danny went with me. Um, if you're here in Michigan, it's something that, uh, that you're really seriously interested in, you know, get a hold of one of us. If we, if we go next year, I can ask if I can bring somebody, uh, especially somebody that's curious and wants to know and, and learn more about this. I can't take 20 or 30 people. It's just that ain't going to happen. It, it, it's actually really, uh, it, it's a, it's a private, it's a private uh, club. Ne- necropsy yep. held on a private club. And, uh, it, it's, it's, it's generous to be asked to come. Yeah, absolutely. So, so it, it's uh, it's something that I've been fortunate enough that, like I said, this was the sixth one I've been to, uh, you know, and it's it's just something I can't bring people to. I have to ask permission um, if I'm, if I'm invited back. So, yeah, right. We don't even know that was this year. Next year might yeah. be a whole different different thing. So, what's the other question? Uh, Benjamin Farrell asks, "What type of release are we shooting these days?" I'm shooting, or we're both shooting the Stands SX3. Yes, we are shooting the Stands SX3. Uh, but we have something hopefully here in the next couple months coming that we're right. going to be playing hopefully. with. Yeah. So we can talk more about that later when we get one. Right. So, so but right now we're using a, a thumb release, um, which it's our first year. Uh, relatively almost a year into switching over from a typical trigger release right. to going to a thumb style, uh, courtesy of Dan Yassa telling us we're going to do that. Yep, uh, and it was the right move to make for us. I mean, it was it, it really changed my shooting style. And actually, well, let's talk a little bit more about that in the last segment of the show. And we, we're going to talk a little bit about our shooting leagues here in a few minutes. Right, so. exactly. So, but uh, no, the the Easy Cut system, man. I I can't say enough for it. I've I've got. 15, 20 different uses for it here around the house that I, I completely cleaned off my uh, my fence line. It has wild grapevines growing on it, and I cleaned that all off with just the simple uh, pruners. And you can see that after laying out in the field for two years, uh, how good a shape they're in. I mean, these things are built tough, and, and we're speaking of easy cut right there. Oh, there you so, go. Uh, it's just a really a really good s- system to have with you if you're out you know, setting up trail cameras and you need to clean something out from around a tree. Uh, if you're in your stand, you know, those pruners, I put them in my backpack all the time when I'm in stand because you get up there, there might be, how many times you guys trim shooting lanes, setting the stand up, you think you got it, and you go back to hunt, and you're like, man, that limb right there, that just, I know, right? that just bugs me, you know, it just bugs me, and you can reach it, you don't want to snap it and make noise, you just get your pruner out, couple bang, cl- couple clicks and it falls done. to the ground. It's done. So, yeah, no, they're definitely, in, and I just got to figure out how to clean the backpack now. Take everything out and put it in the washer. Nope. Put it, or put it put it in a uh, a tote. Put some water in. It, put some either dish detergent or uh, laundry soap. Okay, in it, you know, I do that because you're not going to take that in the in the field with you during hunting. You're not going to strap it on no. the whole thing. You take pieces. Yeah. I just want to clean it up now. Yeah, so I wouldn't worry too much. Or get some scent free detergent if you're worried about that, and then wash it with that. Would you hold it as I get a hose? No. Oh. <laughs> Any more questions over there? Uh Lincoln, let them go. Let them grow. Should have some spots as well we took three members this year okay so steve there you go uh you know check with lincoln or check with myself or danny and uh, we'll see you know coming up next year and we'll see what happens yeah hey paul Penix, just tuning in glad to see you on mr paul always good to hear from mr paul absolutely it's so. always good to hear from him um hope he's doing well in his new job absolutely absolutely so i tell you what we're close to our next break let's take our last break we'll come back let's talk about how we've been doing shooting leagues let's do it so we're gonna step outside and we'll be right back after this acceleration is part of pse's dna pse pioneered the speed movement now they've developed the vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a vapor shooter? Find out at pscarchery.com. Welcome back. Last segment of the show. show. 
We got some shooting. Tonight is week six. number six. Halfway through. Halfway through our, our shooting indoor leagues, archery league, uh, shooting uh, target bows. And man, has that opened up my eyes to a lot of things. And it's just a whole new world. It's really cool. I have a lot of fun. And the most I'm so glad I'm doing it. The most important thing we are is we're having fun. Absolutely. Yeah. So, it's a lot like golf, though. You can get frustrated real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> and you want to throw your clubs <laughs> so, but we don't throw the bow no no we don't do that but uh i'm shooting the uh phenom sd uh from last year you're shooting the evolve 35 okay and we're both shooting stands uh sx3 releases and we're shooting i'm shooting oh actually we're both shooting the sds um, carbon express sds yep which yes folks for an indoor league, we should be shooting something a little bit thicker. Like a Tank 23. Or a 7. <laughs> right. But uh, It's what maybe, we had. It's what we had, and well, maybe next year. Right. So, um, so yeah, no, it, it's, it's been going, going well. Um, every week trying to get a little bit better. We, we've kind of, Sunday nights is, is, is an interesting time to be, to be doing this, uh, especially for me when I'm trying to wind down and gear up going into work the next day and it, it's i know we came back from ata that was a, a struggle of a night then i shot the worst i've ever shot in my life that night yeah and, and actually that the, that night we got back that was a saturday night late middle of the night after a half hour after i got home i passed a, i got a kidney stone and passed it in the middle of the night and then the next day we sh- that sunday we shot and I was making adjustments left and right and blew up and was getting frustrated and I was tired and right. I, I, I wanted to explode. And that was week. Was that our that, third week? That was second week. Second week. That was, yep, that's right. That was the second week. And yeah, I. The first week is the week we found out what it, time it actually really did start. That's right. That's right. We showed up a little late, <laughs> had to shoot makeup. Right. Which that's fine. Yep. But yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's shooting three arrows. Uh, we're shooting. 60 arrows um and in two rounds so you learn to yeah and you're you you can either shoot a three spot or a full face here's my target over let me get it yeah what i've what i've done is like i'm gonna keep keep my best target until i i beat beat the score this one was a 553 two weeks ago that i shot and yeah, as you can see i got a couple couple errant shots but everything's starting to tighten up and then last week uh, this this was two weeks ago, and then last week I got in there and my shoulder was giving me fits, my my left shoulder, and I really thought I didn't shoot that well, and actually wound up tying that same score. So right, exactly, and it, it's one of those things that it it and and you got to remember we're shooting with the likes of a, a Jim Beasley in this league who yeah doesn't miss mm-hmm. except a little <laughs> bit, a little bit, yeah. You know, uh, I don't think he shot a perfect score yet. No, nope. I know he, he he was I think five ninety eight was his high. And to think about that in sixty arrows to miss two, two points. points, yeah, yeah, not too shabby. Yeah, out of, out of around a six hundred, he's shooting anywhere from five ninety five to five ninety eight. Right, and and, th- and and this is in these some of these weeks, some of these people that are shooting these leagues with us, they're coming off shooting the tournament that where, day, where that day or that weekend they shot yeah. both days, and they're coming off shooting already a few hundred arrows. Yep, and smoking us. <laughs> right, so uh, we're learning, and that that's the whole purpose of this is to learn. Uh, Learn the target side of it uh, to get better. Yep. And, and obviously, what this does is this is going to set us up for maybe some three D shooting in the in the summer. Absolutely. And obviously, helping us come the fall. Um, what I've noticed it's helped me with is is form, uh, getting form and perfecting a form, perfecting a routine or a rhythm, a, a shooting style that works. And that's one thing Dan Yasser has really preached to us. You know, figure out your routine and what works for you, and make that. You, that those steps every single time to perfect your shots. It's all about the process. Yeah, the process, the process, the process. Uh, and, but, that, and that's something I learned. Something I learned in bowling was yeah. you have until the foul line to get your shot, and that that for me was a process. Yep. To get from A to Z, and my coach in bowling at the time, uh, you can bowl with that. You, you if you repeat the process over and over and over, and that's what you perfect. Yep. Yep. Work on that process. And so what this is teaching us is our process of archery shooting uh, with a thumb release. Yep. Uh, obviously, we're shooting a smaller diameter or target uh, arrows, um, but shooting them now shows us why these guys and gals shoot a 23 or a 27 yep. because of you're trying to catch that line. Yep. We get yelled at when we try to catch the line. We should just put it in the... Yeah, in we... The, 
Yeah, the people scoring our targets, they're like, would you stop it with cutting lines already? You're too close, you know. Right. If we were shooting the bigger arrows, we wouldn't have that problem. But, you know, actually, we're probably leaving, I would say, what, maybe 10, 12, 15 oh. points on, on the board every night? Every every, every you know? night, it, 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 that smaller diameter arrow isn't catching the line because it's the smaller diameter. Yeah. Where if it was a, a 23 or a 27 or 25, it, it would catch it. Right. So... Um, yeah, it, and that's one of the little things that you don't know about it till you till you do this stuff. Ben, Benjamin Farrell, he says, he's had nights where he gets so frustrated he wants to throw his bow. I understand. <laughs> yes, I understand. But don't. Yeah, but no, it's it, it has it's really tightened my groups up. I'm shooting a lot better, uh, more consistently, and I can't wait till I get back out outdoors and start shooting distance again. Because we, you know we're honing that that process down, and and I've worked on that process, but I've never shot as much as what. Well, I'll take that back. I did shoot a lot last year, but uh, working that at longer distances now, it's going to be interesting to see how it, how it all plays out. And this is going to get us into. into uh, I'd like to get into maybe getting a, a lens for my sight. Yep. Um, I haven't been over to Jim's to, to look into this. Uh, I want to stop over there, and, and uh, this is our halfway mark. So the next six weeks will be just kind of. Tweaking yep. some things, yep. trying some things out. Say, hey, I've never done this, and yeah, let's try it. But we're not gonna bu- we're not gonna buy uh, bigger arrows until next year. That's something. Yeah, I don't no, change I, in the middle of the season. Yeah, I don't want to go through I'm that. I'm not gonna so. change it now. So, so the, you know, the process is what it is right now. And we're gonna build on that. All right, and you know, and we've even got a young guy out there um, uh, a couple weeks back that we shot with who picked up the bow for the first time in August. Right, and he's shooting really well. Yeah. And another gentleman who's shooting a recurve. Yep. And he's out there flinging arrows. And um, it's just, the, this league has got from A to Z in it. It does. And it, that's what makes it fun. And everybody's nice. And, 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 and we told everybody, we're, you know, we're newbies to this, so we might have a lot of questions. And we did ask, we were asking questions every week. And, yeah. Uh, you know, just on, not just shooting-wise, but just on etiquette. Yeah. You know, um, like when you're up at the line, do you walk away after you shoot? Do you stay there? It, it, just some different things. And, and what if, um, you know, you're at the target and this? Oh, well, typically you wouldn't do that, but you just learn. Different scenarios that we're, we're learning to, to grow and walk through, uh, like you said, etiquette. You know, the thing that has got, I've, I've gotten used to it now, but when we first started, you've got, what, a two foot? Is it about two foot I line? would say foot that's two feet. Foot, foot and a half to two foot that you stand on the line to shoot, you know, and you got a person right here in front of you, and then there's another person that close to you right behind you. And it's like you can hear you can hear them breathing. Yes. You know, and, and it's, I don't know, it's just a little little con- disconcerting at first, but I've gotten used to that. And, and, and there isn't a time clock, but sometimes you feel like you have a time clock. It's like, man, I got to get these three arrows off. But right. it, it's, no, we don't have a time clock, so you, you just shoot your three arrows. Yeah. And, um... Most weeks we're running two lines, mm-hmm. top and bottom. Uh, the week of the Super Bowl, we just ran one line because there was enough people missing. We just ran one line, but uh, that's the other part of it. Mm-hmm. You shoot your line, and then you step back and let the other line shoot, or vice versa, mm-hmm. and you get a few minutes to think about it. Yep. Do you find yourself if if you're shooting first, or even even if you're shooting second, when you're standing back and the other other lines up shooting, do you? watch people and see what they're doing and see where their arrows are hitting and, and looking at form or looking at positions of things and how they stand. Do you look at that stuff? Or are you sitting there I'm contemplating a, I, what you've shot or what you're going to shoot? I might, I might be looking at what they're shooting or how they're shooting, but not really because everybody's style is different. Yeah. That, that's one thing I did notice when I was paying attention. Mm-hmm. Everybody's different. Yeah. Uh, and maybe if somebody's shooting a three spot, see how you know if I see watch their arrows, see if, how they're doing, if they're if they're hitting all three spots or what's going on. But not, yeah. I'm not really trying to clone any of their um, ways. No, I just wonder if you're just you know watching, just picking up. It's little just nuances. it's just fun to watch different styles. Yeah, uh, Ben says he says a lens definitely help your shooting, but uh, he knows a few people that shoot actually better without one. So something to. Right, yeah. exactly. See, I don't know if I would or wouldn't. So I'd like to get one just to say, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. Well, I know my eyesight's bad, and I cannot shoot without my glasses. I have to have my glasses. Uh, you're right. And even with that, at it, it distance, uh, I'm looking, and I cannot see the 10 ring. I see the yellow, which is the 9 ring and N. And I'm looking and, and placing my pen at the center of the yellow. And that's how, I mean, I just can't see it. I cannot see uh, at that distance, I can't see that line or that X. I got a question for you. Okay, you got a light. You got a lighted sight on that, right? Yeah. Uh, no. Yes. Yes, I do. 
What about turning the light on? I don't know. I don't know if that's legal. Because I think one guy does. Really? And so I tried it for a couple of rounds. And? I turned my light on. And? It's kinda, it, it, it kind of brightens up your pin really well. I'm like, hmm, yeah. this might be something I might, might do. I don't have a problem seeing my pin. I have more problem finding you know dead center on finding on, the x yeah finding the x i mean right. that that's that's my my issue right but seeing through the through the color to the yellow yeah so i don't know it's just i just i thought i saw a gentleman have his light on so i put mine light on saying let's try it yeah it's kind of cool yeah i don't know if you're shooting uh, a bigger competition if that would actually oh probably work. not they, they get a little quirky on the well, bigger competitions there, there, was, there was one I, I heard a gentleman uh talking at leagues last week or week before last they were talking about some tournament that was local and they said that um etiquette is 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 extremely important in that that shoot you even have to wear you can't oh, wear jeans yeah i heard something about that he yeah. was saying oh yeah you, you yeah, tire is important you, you get you, your attire is even an etiquette thing that you yeah. wear dress pants and in, in, in your shirt and yep. no jeans and then like yeah so yeah, no, I imagine the big tournament's a little different. Yeah, but this is just a fun ragtag tournament league that we're just having fun in. Yeah, it's a blast. It's a shoot. <laughs> Some nights it's it's something else, right? <laughs> but actually, uh, the last three weeks have been really good. You know, uh, first week I shot a five hundred five. Uh, second week I'm not going to say what I shot because it was horrible. I completely blew up. Danny about had to carry me to the van or, right. or to the truck that night because he was way overthinking it i i was making adjustments and tweaking stuff and you it, were psyching yourself out yeah yeah i was it, it became a mental game at that point and i'm like look dude you're just tired just forget this go back to your base settings and start from there and actually once i got back to base settings and like okay let's just have some fun at this point and forget the score i actually shot better that last half of the second half of of that right. round and it, it i won't say it came together but the next week it did um I can't remember that next week I shot a five thirty seven ish I think and then, then you get into the groove and you know you're you know yeah. when you're in the groove kind of like when Dan I noticed his scores was in the groove yeah he missed one groove yeah okay. yeah exactly did you know what at what point in the round he missed that that X I want to say it was like the fourth end of the third round in the fourth it was the third day fourth end fourth end of his round. I saw a nine. Okay, okay, that was. And I bet I bet you that arrow went flying. (laughs) You think? (laughs) So yeah, but you know, watching that stuff live online, we've had a lot of fun watching throughout. You know, we watched Lancaster two weeks ago. That you know, I watched a little bit. Actually, the shoot down right now is probably not quite. It's seven thirty tonight Eastern time. The shoot down is going to be live, I think, on YouTube. So if you if you just go in and Google. 2019 Las, Las Vegas, Vegas shoot. Vegas shoot. Vegas shoot 2019. You ought to be able to watch it live. If you put on in YouTube. Las Vegas shoot. You get some different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Tony so. Smith, uh, Mike, have you considered a clarifier in your peep? We've talked about it, um, but before I do a clarifier, I need to go get my eyes checked again. It's been a while, and and my glasses. I know my prescription has changed. Yep. Uh, because I, I wear two different sets of glasses, uh, one for driving and for distance and for shooting. And then at work, I've got another pair that I use that they're up close in mid range for my workspace. And yeah, I just, as I'm getting older, I need to get, it's been two and a half, three years since oh, yeah, I've yeah, had my, do. yeah, I, my prescription has changed. And before I get it, cause I think, don't they match that to your prescription? I have no idea. If I, I Jim Beasley, uh, spot shooter, he he's talked about that with me before, and I think it it goes off of your your prescription for your glasses. Oh, okay. And I don't know if you, they match it to it, or I I don't know how that works. But yeah, we've talked about it a little bit, so that's something we might that I might consider. But first thing, I think I need a magnifier lens. I would like <laughs> so, to start with there, so I can so I can see the X. Right. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, just looking. Uh, ben says it. it if you were wanted a lens for indoor, he would go with uh, a weaker lens, like a two or three power, uh, where you're only shooting like 20 yards. But for outdoor, a four or six X lens is good because of the targets are out further. Yes, you know, and, and that thanks Ben because actually that's a good that's a good answer to a question a we question had. we had is I asked a guy last week like I see you got a lens, what are you shooting? He said I'm shooting a four X. I'm like why? He goes ah that's just what I got. It never really gave me an answer, you know, as we don't know, like indoor, you know, we're shooting 18 meters, 18 meters. And it's like, okay, which is basically 20 yards right yeah, at it. Right. So 
what what power do we need at that distance you know do people typically use and what power do you use in outdoor when you're shooting anywhere from 15 meters to 80 meters right you know yeah exactly no like that's, that's 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 so, so it makes sense a lower power indoors higher power outdoors yeah and tony smith says aging sucks yes it does <laughs> yes it does Absolutely, but uh, I tell you what, we're let's wrap up the show here. Yeah, um, we gotta go. We gotta go we, shoot. We gotta go shoot. So we'll be on for a few minutes here for the live stream, but for the podcast, that's gonna do it for this this week. Uh, don't know what we got in store yet for next week. Don't I'd know. like to get out and do some ice fishing if we get some some snow. I want to get the Rambo bike on the ice and play with that and tow the sled. I uh, gotta shoot some some video with that. So we're uh, we're just gonna play it by ear right now and see what happens. But uh, you know, you guys get out there and get out in the outdoors, have some fun, but be safe when you do it. So that'll do it for us this week, folks. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Lambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, and Twisted Mind Bow Strings. Thanks for listening, and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.